Hey everybody, I am back with this iPhone 11 Pro Max that I cleaned out under the flood eliminator and I'm going to see today if I can revive Face ID. To do that, I'm using the Clone DZ03. This is something that I searched for and I bought with my own money. This is not a sponsored video or anything. Let me show you what I found out about this iPhone 11 Pro Max. So if you look at this phone using a camera that can see in the infrared spectrum, you'll see that we do have this blinky light thing going on. And what is pretty stinking cool about that is the blinky light that you can see, that's actually the part that I took off and put back on. That is actually the flood eliminator. But the part that the phone is complaining is not working is the true depth camera module here. So we should be seeing the dot projector here light up, like we should be seeing something come out of that sensor right there. So that is really good news for me because that means the work that I did on the proximity sensor slash flood eliminator does seem to be working. That thing is lighting up and it's blasting out infrared. If we look at a phone that we know is working, this is an iPhone 12 Pro Max, you'll see that we not only have that one blinky light, but whenever it actually goes to scan a face, you can see where that dot projector comes to life. You can see the other one blinking there. There's actually two different things that are going, going crazy trying to find my face, which they can't because I've got a Galaxy Note in the way. So what I'm going to be doing here today is using what is referred to as a tag on flex method. This is like an aftermarket third party thing that I, I can't say that I entirely trust all that much. People have been having really good success out of this. So if you look at my last video, you'll see that all I did was basically cleaned out under the flood eliminator slash proximity sensor and put it back on and that got the phone to stop boot looping and that also enabled it to have working ambient light sensor and by the looks of the infrared light coming out of the front of this phone, the little light that I showed, the flood eliminator is working as it should. If you're completely lost, just have a look at the last video that I posted. That's me working on this phone, but then winding up with non-working face ID. So I think what happens, I've now seen this a whole bunch of times, is whenever the flood eliminator gets messed up, it's like the true depth camera system just completely nukes itself. I think the true depth camera is still okay because it looks like it's gonna be possible to use what's called the tag on flex method, which is this little gizmo here. So I think what happens is the chip that's inside of this module here, it gets like nuked or, or disabled in such a way, it becomes possible to actually still read the data out of it. And then we can write that into the aftermarket module. And for some crazy reason, that allows this dot projector to become functional again. I mean, looking at it, there's not any liquid damage here. Like this thing did not get affected in liquid by any way, but for some reason, the component that's on this front flex cable, which I believe we call the flood eliminator, it's just a, an infrared light, that thing being in a disabled state caused this thing to no longer work before. And for some weird reason, we can take this thing and hook it in series and this becomes functional again. So I've never done this before, fair warning. This is not gonna be a video that's like to teach people how to fix face ID because I'm not the guy. Uh, this is just something I've got on Google and I've looked at other people using the tag on flex method to fix this true depth camera problem. So I'm gonna see if we can fix it here today. So I've got the cable that goes to the dot projector module out here traced down and I'm gonna plug this right here to the 11 Pro spot like that and it is detected as 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. Now on the computer software, I'm just gonna click the, let's click the test button and see what we get. Uh, I believe that is an I2C error. Like it's not able to read this module. Let me just try to make sure I've got this plugged in right. Make sure I've got the right one plugged in. So I'm reasonably sure that is the proper cable plugged in there. It knows that it's 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. And then on the computer, if we click test on their software, we're getting an I squared C error. So this module is actually not functional. And if you all remember, this was a customer that the uh, face ID quit working uh, long before the phone died. You know, somebody mentioned updating the software on this. 
I'm not going to cross that bridge just yet. I've got another phone here that's got a face ID issue. I'm going to see if this will fix that. I am really doubtful to be able to revive face ID on this one because it's been broken for so long. But uh, let's try an iPhone 10, shall we? Okay, so the iPhone 10, when we go to unlock the screen, very, very similar issue. We get a blink, 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 blink out of the flood eliminator, but nothing happening with the dot projector. Before we get started, just so everybody can see, the issue with this iPhone 10 is the same exact thing. And I lied, this is a 10S, not a 10. A problem has been detected with the True Depth camera. Face ID has been disabled. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the same exact thing now on the 10S. I've got the cable singled out here that goes to the dot projector. And I'm gonna plug that in right here to the 10S. 10s max spot uh, the programmer is not giving me any indication that i've plugged in the proper cable so that's kind of disturbing right there and now it's showing 10s 10r 10r max i must just not have had it plugged in all the way all right so now on the computer software we're going to click test hey we've got goodies coming out so this one is coming up with a problem. It's showing that we've got a normal thermistor. We've, it's showing 28 degrees C. The I square C is normal. So I believe this is one that we're able to fix with the tag on flex. So I'm gonna give that a try now. What I'm gonna do is just click on read. We're gonna give that one a file name. I'm just gonna call that uh, xs.bin and we're gonna click save. And now that I have a successful read on that module, I'm gonna unplug that and move that out of the way. And then we're going to get out our handy dandy tag on flex thing here and see if I can write the stuff that I just read out of the module that's functioning to this. So basically, we've got good data communication here, but something's going on that's not letting the dot projector light up. So now that I've got that red, and if you look at this thing really closely, you'll see that it's just something that we can hook in series. It has its own little chip on it. So We'll take that and plug that right back into the same spot, right there. It thinks we have connected a 10R, 10S, or 10S Max cable. And now on the computer software, I'm gonna select write, and I'm gonna hand it that 10S bin, okay? And now it says write okay, starting read. I am a little concerned that it still shows some abnormal stuff. What if I click test? Still shows abnormal. Maybe that's because it doesn't, I mean, let me know what you think in the comments below. I can sit here and pretend to be all smart, but I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, so I have to redo the, the battery adhesive because of this. Now, I think one of the most tricky things to do here is gonna be to get this to work out right. Like, I think I can just use the way this thing plugged onto the machine as a reference. And if we go by that, then that plugged on in that direction, this plugged on in this direction. We wanna make sure and keep the orientation the same way and like, unless it's been flipped. So I think that means this is gonna to need to plug in like this. And then that's gonna plug in like that. But that leaves nowhere for this to go, unless it's gonna sit like on top of the, like what in the world? Oh no, I see how it can go. We gotta fold it under. Oh, that's just dandy. Huh. Yeah, we actually have to take the original flex cable here and fold it back like Like this. Got a little nick there in the coating on the edge of that battery. We'll want to be real careful not to do that again. Yeah, that gets folded under like that. That's how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> like that. That's how we put that tag on flex module in there. What a nightmare. And then this can fold over and plug to the board. Yeah, that's how that's gonna go. Yep. All right, so 
there you have it. That has the tag on flex module under there and like folded and, and in there. I'm not really comfortable with that. I mean, it seems okay. Let's, let's see if it works. Does it still boot with all this craziness going on? Well, that's a good sign. We do get an Apple logo. All right, let's see now if this phone has working face ID. We're gonna go into the settings down to face ID and passcode. Look at that. Face ID is there. And if I click get started, is it going to let me pair my face? Hang on. A little higher, a little lower. Reposition your face within the frame. A little higher, a little lower. Is that is that going to be our now our flood eliminator? I have confirmed the flood eliminator is actually working. Let me just get this lined up a little better, and then close the. I'm going to close the screen. Everything is there the way that it should be. All right. So now the screen is closed. Let's just try that again. Hmm. No, it's still got something really funky wrong with it. Let's have a look at the sensors at the top of here whenever I tell it to fire up Face ID and see if we're getting both of them or just one. All right, on. Yeah, so we're getting... We're getting the one to light up, but still... We're not getting anything out of the dot projector, right? There should be two distinct sensors here where one of them is lighting up and then the other one is doing some crazy things. There's still something really, really fishy going on here. I feel like I have tricked this phone into trying to scan a face, but it's still missing what we actually need to scan it. So I know you all were really looking for me to post a how to fix face ID video, but uh, this ain't it. So on the 11 Pro Max that I worked on, it was actually not able to read the data out of the front facing sensor. And then on the 10S that I'm working on, it was able to read the data, write it to the tag on flex, but it still does not appear to have gotten the dot projector working. It's still move face higher, lower. It's not, it's still not working properly. So I may come back to this and visit again in the future. I know I'm probably gonna get a bunch of thumbs downs over this video, but please be gentle and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm open to all your suggestions. And um, there was several of you that told me that if you're not already doing face ID repairs and stuff, just stay away from it. And that's probably a really good suggestion. So that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day.